Okay, so this last tab, you're going to title it Solving by Elimination with Multiplication First. Okay, let's take a look at the first example. We're going to do four total examples. So I'm going to have you guys do two on the top and then two on the bottom. Okay, so we're going to do example one and example two up here on the top. Okay. All right, so here's your first example. Okay, go ahead, write that one down. Okay, so in this one, like yesterday, what you guys learned was all you had to do was just add them together and then like something canceled out, right? Or maybe you had to m multiply one of them by a negative one and then it would cancel out. But like right now, if I add these together, are 4 and negative 1 going to cancel out? No. no. Are 2 and 8 going to cancel out? No. no. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to actually take one of the equations and multiply it by a number so that I can get these two coefficients to be the same number with an opposite sign. Okay. So wouldn't it be nice if this one was a four here that had negative four when it then cancel out with positive four yeah. okay so I want it to be a negative four there right now it's a negative one so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this equation and I'm gonna multiply it by four because what's four times negative one negative four right okay now remember when I'm working with an equation I have to do the same thing to all the parts to keep the property of equality. So I'm going to multiply this 4 by every single part here. Okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my set of equations that I have. So I'm not doing anything to the top one right now. I'm just leaving that one alone. Okay, but I'm multiplying 4 times this one. So that makes negative 4x. And I'm multiplying 4 times 8y, 32. which makes positive 32y. And I'm multiplying 4 by 26, 24. which makes 104. Okay? So now what I'm going to do then is now I see these have the same coefficient with an opposite sign, so they will cancel, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw my columns, okay, and combine those. All right, so let's go ahead and draw our columns and combine. So when I do that, these ones make zero. These ones, positive two and positive 32 makes what? 34. There's a Y with that. Drop down your equal sign. And negative two and 104 makes 102, right? Okay, so now, how do I solve this equation for y? Divide by 34 on both sides. Divide by 34. And so what do I get for my value of y? Equals 3. Let's go ahead and let's take what I got for my y value and plug it in. I can plug it into either one of the original equations. I want to plug it into the one that I think is easier to work with. So which one looks easier to work with to you guys, the top or the bottom? The top, okay. So we're going to get 4x plus 2 times y, y was 3, equals negative 2. 
Okay, so all I've done here, this next step, is I've done, I've substituted the value of y in here, right? Into that equation, right? That's what I did. Okay, and now I'm going to solve. Okay, so once I start solving, what's 2 times 3? 6. Okay, and now, how do I finish solving that? Subtract. Okay, so we get 4x equals negative 8. And then what's my last step there? Divide by 4, right? Okay, so what do I get for my value of x? Negative 2, 3. Not the ordered pair, just the x right now. Negative 2 is my x, right? So remember, negative 2 is not the answer, 3 is not the answer, it's the ordered pair that is the answer, right? So the ordered pair I always have to write in the form of x comma y. So I'm going to write the x first, and then I'm going to write the y next, so the x is negative 2, and the y is 3. Okay, and so this is my actual answer, this ordered pair is the final answer. Okay, now, um, if you want to check if this is the right answer, you can take this x and y, and you can plug it in, into both of the original equations you started with, okay? And so if we take this x and y and we plug it in up top, this whole side will end up making negative 2. And if I plug it in here, this whole side would end up making 26. And that's how I know that I solved it correctly. If I plug my x and my y in and I don't get this number or I don't get this number, then that means I've done something wrong and I need to go back and check my work. So, on the quiz or on the test, okay, if you have extra time left over, like you finish your quiz, you finish your test 10 minutes early, what do you need to do with all your solutions? Check. check. Plug them in and check if you did it right, okay? If it's not coming up that you get the same number on both sides and you've done something wrong, you need to go back and rework it, okay? All right. Let's take a look at example two. So in that problem, right now, are any of your coefficients the same number? No. No. Okay. My goal is to either make the x's the same number with opposite signs or the coefficient on the y is the same number with opposite signs. Okay. Now, when I'm looking at what numbers I have here, is it easy to turn 2 into 9? No, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 5 is 10, okay? It's not easy to turn 2 into 9, okay? Is it easy to turn 7 into 14? Yes. Okay. What do I have to multiply 7 by to turn it into 14? 2. By 2. Now, if I just mul multiply by positive 2, then I get positive 14. Is that going to be the opposite sign of the one above it? No. So what kind of 2 should I multiply by? Negative, Okay. So we're going to multiply the whole bottom by negative 2, okay? So here's what we get. We're going to rewrite the top one, leave it just the way it is, because we're not multiplying that one. And now let's multiply the bottom. What's negative 2 times 7x? Negative 14. Negative 14x. Okay, what's negative 2 times negative 2y? Positive 4y. And negative 2 times negative 11? 22. Positive 22. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do my columns. Okay. 
So because these are same number opposite sign, they're making nothing, so those cancel out, right? They make zero, they eliminate. What's negative nine and positive four? Negative five. Negative five. Why? And what's three and twenty-two? Twenty-five. Okay. Now, how would you continue solving from there? Yep, divide. Okay, and so what do we get? What kind of 5? Negative 5. Okay. So now we have our y value. Am I finished with the problem, though? No. No, I want to take that y value and plug it into one of my original equations the one that I think is easier to work with. Which one would you guys like, the top or the bottom? Which one do you like the numbers better? You want to multiply by 9 or by 2? I kind of like the bottom. Okay, since you guys don't care, we're going to use the bottom. So 7x minus 2 times negative 5. Let's go ahead and see what we get here. When I multiply negative 2 and negative 5, what do I get for that part? Ten. Positive 10. Okay, now how am I going to continue solving there? What needs to go next? Get rid of this 10. Subtract it. Okay, we get 7x equals... Negative 21. And last, divide by 7. Okay, what is your value of x you get? Okay, so remember, we have not written down our answer yet. Okay, so let's write our final answer, which is our ordered pair, x first. Then y. Okay, there's your final answer. Now remember, if you're not sure if this is correct, you can take it and you can plug in your values to your original equations, right? You would plug it into both original equations to see if it's correct. Okay. Does anyone need more time on example two? Writing down. Okay. All right, let's move on to example number three. Okay, so on this one, can you turn 3 into 5 or 5 into 3? Can you turn 6 into 4 or 4 into 6? No. Okay, so when you have this situation where you can't just like turn one number into the other number, you need to find the least common multiple, okay, and turn them both into the same number, all right? So... We can either turn these two into what's the least common multiple of 3 and 5? 15. 15. Or we can turn these two into what's the least common multiple 12. here? 12. Okay, what do you guys want me to do? You want me to turn the x's or the y's? Y's. Okay, now, here's the thing with the y's. Do you see how these are the same sign? I feel like it's less work to turn the x's because they're already opposite signs. Do you guys see that? Okay, so is it okay with you guys if we turn the X's instead? Okay, 
So what's the least common multiple of 5 and 3? 15. So I'm going to multiply this one by 3, because 3 times 5 would make that 15. And I'm going to multiply this one down here by 5, because that would make 15 also. And they're already opposite signs, so I don't need to use a negative on either one of these. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's go ahead and rewrite both equations. Okay. 3 times 5x, it's a negative 5x, so it's negative 15x, 3 times negative 4y, negative 12y, okay, and then 3 times 14, 42, okay, all right, for the other one, 5 times 3x, 15x, 5 times negative 6 is negative 30y, and 5 times 0? Zero? 0. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do your columns. Okay, which one do I get to cross out? The x's, because they're opposites, right? Negative 15 x's and positive 15 x's makes 0 x's. That's nothing. They have the same... True. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look here. So we get negative 42y equals, this makes 42. So how are you guys going to solve that? Yep. Okay, you're dividing by a negative. So what's a positive divided by a negative? Negative. Okay, so y equals negative 1. Okay, now, you need to take that and plug it back in to one of these two original ones. So, you guys want to plug into the bottom or the top? Bottom. bottom. bottom? Okay. So, 3x minus 6 times negative 1, because that's going in the y spot, equals 0. Okay, so what is 6 times negative 1? is positive 6. Uh -huh. Don't forget to bring down your 0. Okay, how do you solve from here? Can you subtract 6? Mm -hmm. So we get 3x equals negative 6. Now you divide by 3. Divide. Okay, what do you guys get for your value of x then? Negative 2. Negative 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down our final answer, which is the ordered pair. So the ordered pair, this is the final answer, is the x value first, and then the y value next. So there's your final answer. Okay. Are there any questions on how we got that one? Any questions? Okay. I have one more that I want to do with you guys. Can I move this? Are you guys done? Okay. okay. Write down this last one, please. Okay, so let's look at this one. Okay, do you have either the x's or the y's opposite signs already? No. no. Okay, which numbers do you think it's easier to find the least common multiple for? The numbers that are with x or the numbers that are with y? The x, probably, right? 
I don't know off the top of my head what the least common multiple between 12 and 21 is, but I do know for 4 and 7, what's the least common multiple? 28, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and multiply both of these. Okay, how would I turn 4 into 28? Seven. By 7. How would I turn 7 to 28? 4. Four. Now, right now they're not opposite signs. So one of these needs to be a negative to change the sign. So which one, the top or the bottom? Bottom. bottom? Okay, doesn't really matter. Okay, you're still going to get the same answer. So let's take a look at what we get when we multiply. 7 times 4, 28. 7 times 12, 84. And 7 times 8. Okay, on the bottom, negative 4 times 7. Negative 28. Negative 4 times 21. Negative 4 times 14. Okay. Okay, so... Let's look at what's happening here. Do these ones go away? Yeah. What about these ones? Yeah. What about these? Okay, yeah. I can't just leave nothing down here. I'm going to write the number for nothing is zero. Bring down the equal sign. What's the other number for nothing? Zero. Okay, now, I heard some people say, oh, it's no solution. But is this true? Zero equal to zero? Yes. What happens when all our variables go away? We get a true solution. Infinite, right? So this one is infinite solutions. Now, class, let me ask you guys. What would have happened if maybe I started with a different number than 8 here? And I got, like, something else than 56? And so here, maybe what if I had, like, 14 on this side? What would happen if I had 0 equals 14? What would the answer be then? No yeah, no solution, because that's not true. Does that make sense? Yes. But if you get a true statement, that means infinite solutions. So infinite solutions is your answer here, okay? Because the statement you got is true, even though all the variables are gone, okay? All right, are there questions on that one?